Thank you for taking the time to watch the habitat presentation for the Laramie region. My name is Britt Burdett and I'm the Saratoga Terrestrial Habitat Biologist. The purpose of this short video is to review 2022 habitat and weather information for the Laramie region. Habitat biologists provide weather and habitat information to assist wildlife biologists in the season setting process. So why is habitat important? Productive habitats help wildlife meet their nutritional and cover requirements year round. Quality habitat can lead to strong herd recruitment through high doe fawn and cow-calf ratios, which is necessary to maintain healthy wildlife populations. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department recognizes that we will lose wildlife to disease, accidents, predation, and weather events, but providing quality habitat can reduce those impacts. Habitats that meet or exceed the nutritional requirements of big game species can produce healthy herds. This can lead to improved antler and horn growth which can produce trophy animals available for harvest. We all know that winter in Wyoming is tough and we expect some level of winter mortality. Providing quality habitat helps animals head into winter in better physical condition, reduce mortality, and allows populations to recover more quickly after a tough winter. Ultimately, diverse habitats result in diverse wildlife populations. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department established the Wyoming Mule Deer Initiative to explore solutions to the many challenges affecting the health and viability of our mule deer herds. Efforts by the Laramie Region's habitat biologists are largely focused on the region's two MDI herds, Sheep Mountain and Platte Valley. Large scale disturbances have occurred throughout the southern portions of these two herd units. Overall, we anticipate impacts from these disturbances to benefit mule deer. Potential invasion and dominance of disturbed areas by invasive weeds, such as cheatgrass, remain a high concern. Herbicide applications and monitoring efforts are currently focused on many of these disturbed areas. We continue to see excellent recovery of aspen habitats post-fire. These habitats are very important to mule deer for fawning, fawn rearing, and transitional use in spring and fall ranges. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department evaluates the quantity and quality of habitat available to wildlife populations through several different methods. These methods include rapid habitat assessments, precipitation models, production and utilization clippings, and pre and post treatment monitoring. The first type of habitat monitoring we will talk about is rapid habitat assessments. These are commonly referred to as RHAs. RHAs are a department-developed methodology for evaluating habitats, specifically for mule deer, across all seasonal ranges. We can make some assumptions on the quality of habitat for other species as well, including elk, moose, and pronghorn. When completing RHAs, we look at numerous factors to determine if the habitat is supporting mule deer populations. If the habitat is not supporting the population, we evaluate which factors are negatively affecting the habitat and identify opportunities for improvement. The information collected aids the wildlife biologist in making informed decisions on whether the big game populations are currently in sync with available habitats, if big game populations are having negative impacts on available habitats, or if big game populations should be allowed to increase due to the quantity and quality of available habitat. Wyoming Game and Fish Department reviews population objectives every five years and uses RHA data in the review process. Laramie Region habitat biologists continue to complete RHAs in the two MDI herd units by assessing aspen, riparian, and rangeland habitats. In 2022, 16 RHAs were completed, encompassing 360 acres in the Sheep Mountain Mule Deer Herd Unit. In the Platte Valley Mule Deer Herd Unit, 12 RHAs were completed, encompassing 549 acres. Within both herd units, we documented high shrub mortality in some places, which is expected in areas affected by summer wildfires. In areas unaffected by recent wildfires, we continue to witness poor mixed mountain shrub health and vigor. Annual leader production is typically less in older shrubs compared to plants subjected to more recent positive disturbances. In addition to RHAs, Laramie Region habitat biologists also completed cheatgrass monitoring and willow surveys in 2022. Extensive time was spent monitoring cheatgrass in the Mullen Fire burn scar. Over 10,300 acres were treated on the western slopes of the Snowies in 2021. 
Last summer, the Forest Service, Wyoming Game and Fish Department, and other partners monitored herbicide efficacy one year post treatment on the western slopes, as well as completed pre treatment monitoring on the eastern slopes of the snowies. Approximately 6,300 acres were treated on the eastern slopes of the snowies in 2022. Monitoring will continue in 2023 to assess herbicide efficacy and identify potential retreatment areas. Here are just some before and after photos of the Mullen Fire cheatgrass treatments. The first picture is pre-treatment in 2021. You can see very little green herbaceous material and a lot of bare ground. All of the dull tan color is cheatgrass. In the second photo is one year post-treatment. Very little cheatgrass was observed in most of the treated areas. And as you can see in the picture, native perennial grasses are starting to recover. There's still a lot of bare ground, but we hope to see native grasses continue to recover and expand into those areas. Overall, plant species diversity was comparable pre and post treatment, with the exception of a few native annual forbs. We documented cheatgrass in areas where soil movement had occurred, and high density of cheatgrass was found within the no spray buffer around the North Platte River. 2022 was the second year of willow monitoring within the Snowy Range Moose Herd Unit. We evaluated willow community conditions using a quantitative measure of browse intensity called the Keegley Live Dead Index. We completed 16 surveys that primarily focused on three species of willow. We also opportunistically completed surveys for other willow species. The majority of surveys in 2022 were completed on plain leaf willow communities. Next, we will look at precipitation models, which are another tool we use to monitor habitat and weather in the Laramie region. Habitat biologists use PRISM models to evaluate the amount and timing of precipitation received throughout the water year. In this figure, which was created using data extracted from the PRISM models, we show the amount and timing of precipitation for the sheep mountain mule deer herd unit. On the x-axis, we have the year. On the y-axis, we have the amount of precipitation received in inches. The blue bars represent annual precipitation that occurred during the water year, which runs from October to September the following year. The red bars represent precipitation received from April to June or growing season precipitation. The green bars represent precipitation received from May to July or spring, summer, fall precipitation. Each temporal precipitation grouping has a corresponding 30 year average shown by the three dashed lines. Data extracted from the 2022 PRISM model showed us that not only annual precipitation across the Sheep Mountain Mule Deer Herd Unit was below average, but key periods for plant growth in low and high elevations were substantially below average. Growing season precipitation, or the red bars, was the lowest in 2022. The amount and timing of precipitation is important as it affects the productivity of the habitat. Precipitation that falls in April through July is strongly correlated with the overall production of herbaceous and woody vegetation. A 24% deficit from normal precipitation occurred in May through July in the spring, summer, fall ranges for mule deer. Lack of summer precipitation led to earlier senescence of herbaceous forages across all seasonal ranges. The foothills and plains located adjacent to the snowy range experienced very dry conditions with a short window of green up in the spring. Throughout the herd unit, some late summer monsoonal weather patterns developed, bringing much needed rain to higher and lower elevations. Conditions throughout the Platte Valley Mule Deer Herd Unit were comparable to the Sheet Mountain Mule Deer Herd Unit. Annual precipitation was well below the 30 year average in 2022. Over the last six years, growing season precipitation was the lowest in 2018, followed by 2021. In addition to the deficit in annual precipitation, moisture events in the critical growing months for herbaceous and woody vegetation were also below normal. High elevation spring, summer, fall, or May through July precipitation was higher than growing season precipitation. However, it was still below the 30 year average. Precipitation falling during these months is essential for plant growth at high elevations in this herd unit. Lack of summer precipitation led to earlier senescence of herbaceous forages across all seasonal ranges. 
Late July and early August monsoonal moisture patterns provided some late summer green up of forage, which likely aided fawn rearing does in meeting nutritional demands. Lack of precipitation likely means less growth and recovery occurred in areas impacted by recent wildfires. Timing of precipitation in key growing months is critical to the growth of plant species important to wildlife. Some precipitation occurred early in the growing season, but quickly diminished in May and June. Lack of summer precipitation led to earlier senescence of grasses and forbs. This likely had some negative impacts on doe fawn and cow calf ratios. Some monsoonal precipitation fell in July and August that aided the regeneration of aspen and some key shrub species, but was too late to impact grass and forb production. Regional personnel witnessed the loss of important seasonal water sources, particularly for pronghorn in the Laramie Plains areas. This greatly impacted pronghorn distribution in some hunt areas and may have caused migrations much earlier in the year than normal. Overall, we had a relatively mild 2021-2022 winter. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, weather stations from Torrington, Cheyenne, Laramie, and Rollins reported a decline from average annual precipitation in 2022. Up next, I will very quickly touch on production and utilization clippings. The department uses production and utilization clippings to estimate the amount of forage available to wildlife and the amount of forage utilized by wildlife. We conduct production and utilization clippings during the late summer and late winter or early spring to determine the amount of key forages available for big game species and the percent of available forage used by wildlife. This is particularly important for key winter range areas, including the Pennock and Wick WHMAs in the Laramie region. Pre- and post-treatment monitoring are critical components of habitat enhancement projects. Habitat biologists collect pre-treatment monitoring information before projects begin. After project implementation, we monitor things like annual production, utilization by wildlife, vegetative diversity, and presence or absence of invasive species. We can then use this information to determine the success of a treatment or to adapt treatment protocols if necessary. While I won't go into the actual monitoring, each of the habitat treatments presented on the next slides underwent some version of pretreatment monitoring. Post-treatment monitoring will be completed in 2023. The department is actively treating wildlife habitats with several different tools. Throughout the region, Wyoming Game and Fish Department is implementing aerial herbicide applications, prescribed fire, brush mowing, and conifer cutting on big game seasonal ranges. The goal of these treatments is to enhance or restore important habitats, to provide critical components necessary to improve the health and vigor of big game species, which results in an opportunity for hunting and other wildlife-based recreation. In 2022, we focused a lot of effort on combating cheatgrass invasions. We treated 6,288 acres of cheatgrass within the Mullen Fire Burn Scar on the eastern slopes of the Snowy Range. Additionally, we treated 5,688 acres in the Sabeel Canyon. Within the Platte Valley Mule Deer Herd Unit, we completed 9.2 miles of fence conversion with an important mule deer habitat. We completed 305 acres of juniper thinning on the Mule Creek public access area. The Platte Valley Habitat Partnership continued its large-scale conifer encroachment project in 2022 and completed 867 acres of juniper removal. Under the U.S. Forest Service Landscape Vegetation Analysis Project, or LAVA, partners completed a 213-acre shrub mowing project. Throughout our time in the field, we made several observations this past summer. Shrub conditions in much of the Platte Valley, the Laramie Range, and Goshen Rim areas continue their downward trajectory and overall habitat value. Lack of disturbance at the proper time has resulted in older age class shrubs exhibiting poor annual leader growth and low nutritional content. Invasive cheatgrass continues to get a foothold in the understory of mixed mountain shrub stands, often resulting in reduced vegetative diversity due to fierce competition for moisture and nutrients. Sagebrush habitats from Laramie to Shirley Basin continue to show the signs of excessive browsing by pronghorn that has occurred for decades. 
As population managers continue to manage for populations to stay within established herd objectives, this may not be enough to result in any rebound in shrub conditions. Changes in plant communities and overall production are slow in high desert environments. Habitat biologists within the Laramie region continue to spend an extensive amount of time monitoring and treating areas recently disturbed by wildfire. Several large wildfires have occurred in the last 10 years in the three major mountain ranges found in the Laramie region. We have seen some positive impacts on habitats, especially with the response of aspen following fire. The amount of aspen resprouting following fire is typically very high, and we tend to see that browsing by wildlife and livestock is spread out over the landscape, often resulting in improved aspen regeneration and overall survival of aspen suckers. The Forest Service, Wyoming Game and Fish Department, Conservation Districts, State Forestry, and other partners continue to work cooperatively to identify priority areas for habitat enhancement as part of the LAVA project. Areas throughout the Snowy Range and Sierra Madres are being analyzed for treatments to meet multiple objectives from wildlife habitats to forest stand health. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department hopes to work with the Forest Service on addressing habitat issues with an emphasis on improving spring, summer, fall seasonal range habitats for all big game species. Laramie Region habitat biologists have plans to implement Z dikes, remove conifers, complete fence conversions, and treat cheatgrass in 2023 and 2024. Sites will be evaluated for future Z dike structure placement throughout the Laramie Region. Placement of these structures is designed to stop erosion in ephemeral draws and A grade these areas over time to improve water holding capacity and the green period in late summer months for pronghorn fawn rearing and sage grouse brood rearing. Cheek grass continues to threaten the native vegetation found on our landscapes, negatively impacting annual production of preferred forages and creating an environment more prone to wildfires. Several cheek grass control herbicide treatments will occur in the Laramie region in 2023, including more rangeland habitats in Seville Canyon, the Mule Creek Ranch public access area, and the mountain foothills above Woods Landing burned by the Badger Creek wildfire in 2018. Sites that were treated in 2019 in the Platte Valley are being evaluated for retreatment in the coming years. That concludes the weather and habitat summary for the Laramie region in 2022. If you have any questions, please reach out to either of the habitat biologists in the Laramie region.